Hello everyone, Physics here. Welcome to another tutorial. In this one we will go over the AIM-9 Sidewinder, the configuration of the missile, how to employ them, the differences between each variant, as well as briefly go over the dogfight mode. This tutorial is valid for all Sidewinder variants we currently have in Falcon BMS, and are available on the F-16s, specifically AIM-9 Mike, AIM-9 Papa, and AIM-9 X-Ray. At the time of this recording, the following IR missiles are configured and employed in the same way as the Sidewinders, specifically Python 4, Python 5, and Iris T. This tutorial is not intended to be an extensive explanation on all the technical aspects of these weapons and their associated systems, but I believe that if you follow this tutorial, you will be able to use these weapons effectively. Let's get into it. setup inside the aircraft. When you're in the aircraft, go to air-to-air -air mode. On the SMS page, the first OSB specifies the operating mode, in this case air-to-air -air missiles. Pressing it once will enable the air-to-air -air gun. Press it again to go back to air-to-air -air missiles. The second OSB, VID mode, is currently not implemented. The following OSB takes you to the inventory page, where you can check what's currently loaded on the aircraft. Press it again to go back. The next OSB is the control page. In the case of the sidewinders, there isn't anything here of significance, so I won't cover it. The OSB after that shows the type and quantity of the selected missile. If you have more than one air-to-air -air missile loaded on the aircraft, press the OSB to cycle through them. Underneath, for the sidewinders which have this option available, we have the Argon Gas option which can be either warm or cool. Argon gas is used to cool the missile's seeker head, making it more sensitive to heat and thus more effective at tracking. Press it once to activate cooling, pressing it again will deactivate it. Note that in the dogfight mode, the cooling is triggered by default when you enter the mode. Also note that the quantity of gas in the missile is limited, so only enable cooling when you're about to shoot the missile. The bottom of the SMS page displays the stations where the selected missiles are loaded. Press the OSBs next to them to cycle between the stations. You can do the same thing by pressing the nose wheel steering button on your stick. Finally, use the last OSB to cycle between the slave and bore options. Slave ties the missile to the radar and the seeker head will look at whatever the radar is tracking. Bore allows the missile seeker head to be independent from the radar. This is especially useful if you have a helmet mounted display, which you can use to look at and track targets only using the Sidewinder seeker. We will see that a little later. Missile Symbology When tracking a target on the radar with the Sidewinder selected, in this case the X version, you will see the following. The big circle in the center of the heads-up display is the allowable steering error circle. However, this is mostly relevant for the AMRAM. It is an essential when using the Sidewinder, especially the most modern versions. The target can be well outside of this circle and the missile can still track it. Moving around the circle, the small triangle indicates the target's aspect angle. Inside the target itself, we have the TD box. Displayed underneath is the target's current altitude and inside there is a diamond. Diamond indicates that the missile's seeker head is pointed in that direction. A small diamond indicates that the missile is caged, meaning that its seeker is inactive. In order to uncage the missile, use the uncage button on your throttle. Once it's uncaged, a large diamond will be displayed. As you can see in this example, despite the missile being uncaged, the seeker head isn't tracking the target. This is due to the fact that the coolant has not been applied to the missile. This step should be done before shooting the missile. Along the right hand side of the HUD, we have the dynamic launch zone, with the following information. The first marking is RMAX-1. You can shoot within this mark if the target is not maneuvering, but there still is a low probability of hitting. RMAX-2 and RMIN-2 assumes that the shot is taken against a maneuvering target. The probability of hitting within this mark is high. Between RMIN-2 and RMIN-1, the probability that the missile will correctly track the target is still high. However, there is a probability of the fuse not going off. Try to avoid shooting in this mark whenever possible. 
Underneath the DLZ, we have the predicted time from launch to impact, currently 8 seconds. After shooting, an additional number will be displayed, showing the remaining time until impact of the missile that was launched. Finally, along the left-hand side of the DLZ, we have the closure rate, currently 120 knots. Shooting the Sidewinder. I will now demonstrate how to launch the Sidewinder from start to finish. First, I go to air-to-air -air mode and then track the target on the radar. I then activate the coolant process. I turn to acquire the target visually, I then uncage the missile, wait for the tone, FOX2. Shooting the Sidewinder with Boresight. As I mentioned before, if you're equipped with a helmet mounted display, you can use it in conjunction with the Boresight mode to engage the target, as I will now demonstrate. As previously, I go to air to air mode, enable the cooling, but switch to Bore. I then look at the target, uncage the missile, wait for the tone, FOX2. differences between the variants. The M9 Papa is mostly a rear aspect missile. If the target deploys flares, this variant is very susceptible to them. Also, if the missile is asked to perform a high G maneuver, it will most likely fail. Finally, if you put too much G on the aircraft as you launch, it is possible that the missile will fail to release, leaving you with the hung store. The mic version is classed as an all aspect type missile, allowing you some more options from the front. However, if shot at the target's front, it can still be unreliable. Additionally, this variant allows you to use the helmet mounted display and the boresight mode. Finally, the X-ray version is an excellent all-aspect missile. It is very resistant to countermeasures and it can perform some extreme maneuvers. It's unlikely that the missile will lose track by pulling extreme amounts of G. I have also never seen this missile become a hung store even when the aircraft is pulling 9G when you shoot. Finally, when using bore mode, this missile has an extreme high off-bore sight capability. Pretty much 90 degrees.
dogfight mode. If you're ever merged with an enemy aircraft, this is the best mode to use during the engagement. It quickly overrides any other modes you were previously in, puts the radar in ACM mode, declutters the HUD and readies both the gun as well as the air-to-air -air missiles for use. Also, like I mentioned previously, it activates the Sidewinder schooling process automatically. You can enter this mode by setting the override switch on your throttle to dogfight. To exit this mode, flip the switch back to the neutral position. Alternatively, on the keyboard, you can press the D key to enable the dogfight mode. Press the C key to cancel it. When in dogfight mode, you'll have the following symbology on the heads-up display. Along the right-hand side, you'll have the DLZ, which the symbology is exactly the same as shown previously. On top, you have the target's aspect angle, which is currently 17 degrees to the right of my nose. Moving around on the HUD, either if you're tracking a target with a radar or not, you'll have the gun funnel. If you're not tracking a target, simply put the target's windspan inside the funnel, with the wingtips touching the edges, and then pull the trigger. If you are tracking a target with the radar, you'll have the targeting solution. If the target is not maneuvering, put the plus side that's inside it and shoot. If the target is maneuvering, place the small circle over the target and shoot. If you and the target are pulling a lot of G's, put the dash that's underneath the small circle over the target and shoot. Along the bottom of the HUD, you have the attitude awareness arc which should help avoid spatial disorientation by informing you about your aircraft's role. It's especially useful in low visibility conditions. The rest of the symbology present should already be familiar to you. On the top left you have the current G's. Underneath you have the calibrated airspeed. On the bottom left corner you have your position relevant to bullseye. And then on the right you have the altitude. If you're not tracking a target, Press TMS forward to command bore sight. This puts a cross on the center of the HUD and if a target is detected near that cross it will lock it up. Pressing TMS right for more than a second puts the radar on a 30 by 20 search area centered on the HUD. If you are tracking a target, press TMS aft to reject it. Pressing that same button if you're not tracking a target to begin with commands a 10 by 60 search area. Think of this as a vertical search. Additionally, if equipped with a helmet mounted display, you can simply look outside of the aircraft, point the crosshair at the target, press TMS forward once, and then release. The target should be locked. If you look at the SMS page, it looks quite similar to what it looks like in normal air-to-air -air mode, with the following relevant differences. Both the gun and the selected missile type are shown, along with the quantities. You can cycle through the different types of missiles by pressing the OSB as normal. You will also notice that cool is activated by default, in order to minimize the time you have to wait until the missile is available to shoot. Overall, dogfight mode is a very powerful tool if you do end up on a dogfight. It allows you to have both the gun and the missiles available at the same time and it reduces symbology to the essentials in order to let you concentrate on shooting down the opponent. Let's briefly summarize the missile types. The AIM-9 Papa practically has no all aspect capability, is very vulnerable to flares, and can't withstand a lot of G, either as it's being launched or during the flight. The AIM-9 Mike has some all aspect capability, it's more resistant to flares, and less prone to fail during high G maneuvers. The AIM-9 X-Ray offers great all-aspect capability, is capable of high off-bore sight shots, it's very resistant to flares, and it's practically immune to fail under G. Finally, let's summarize the engagement sequence of the Sidewinder. 1. Either track the target with the radar or with the Sidewinder Seeker Head. 2. Uncage the Seeker Head and wait for the tone. And 3. Shoot. And there we have it. The Sidewinders are the best option in close-in engagements. They are more maneuverable on shorter ranges compared to the MRAM. I hope this tutorial was helpful, thank you for watching and I will see you on the next one.